talking about is a basic introduction to tables. So Logan, if you will, I know in the last section we talked just a little bit about tables when we were going over introduction to databases. But tell us, if you could, a little bit about tables. A table is actually going to be like an array of your data, basically a container for your actual data. Okay. Um, like you can have multiple tables inside your database, so multiple, uh, multiple containers for the actual data to organize it out. Okay. So now in a database itself, how many containers or tables can we have? It's unlimited. Okay, so we have multiple ones. All right, and let me ask you this. Does, you know, obviously these containers or these tables, they're going to have names, right? Right. If I've got two different databases residing inside of my SQL, uh, the tables within them, do their names have to be different? In other words, if I had one table named clients in one database, in another database, could I also have a table named clients as well? Yes, because it's, it's separated. The, ta the, uh, the databases will separate that out. It's two different containers. It's, kinda like, it's almost like two different folders on your hard drive. Okay. Two different folders. You could have the exact same file in both of them, uh -huh. name the same in everything. Okay, sounds good. I uh, just wanted to kind of clear some stuff up for those out there that may be thinking about can I do this or can I not. So um, we uh, saw in the last section that we created the BuzzDB. If, again, if I come in here and just say show databases, uh, there's BuzzDB. So we'll go ahead and say use BuzzDB. All right, so now we're inside it. So the first thing I want to do is show you that there is also a show tables command, just as there is a show databases command. And what this will do is it will list out all of the tables that are inside the current database that we are using. Now, remember, the current database that we're using right now is BuzzDB because we just said right here to use it. So I'll just go ahead and come in here and say show tables and again use a terminator at the end and hit enter and it's an empty set so we have no actual tables right right so I guess the first thing that we need to do is create one yep but in creating one we need to talk about fields for a minute right so uh, go ahead Logan you're doing such a great job of this tell us about fields my friend okay now fields are what's going to specify how you store data in your table because you can, as I said before, you can get really specific like with what kinds of data you can put in a table. Okay. And the fields what specifies what kind of data goes, goes in the table. You can have multiple fields in a table, and each of those fields can be set to like an integer, like kind of like in variables. Uh, you can have an integer, you can have uh, a char, which is basically the same thing as a string. So you can, use, you can use field types to specify what kind of data you're going to be putting in your table. Okay, so... But a couple of key things there that I want to point out, things that really caught my attention. First of all, we're completely good at saying fields are containers for the actual data now. Yes. Okay. And that fields kind of resemble variables. In a way, yes. Um, basically, in defining a field, we will tell the field what type of data that that field is capable of holding. Right. And we have things, just like we saw in variables, that we had an int where it could store an integer number, okay, a whole number. Uh, we also have field types such as int, right? Right. Uh, so I guess what I could do is spend just a second and talk about, I don't know, let's just go over, let's say, four of probably the most basic field types there are. So we have int, okay? Right. And int's going to store just a whole number for us. No decimals allowed. We've got varchar. And varchar, now we do have char as well, right? Right. And, and tell us, what does is, what is char hold? Char holds, it basically holds a string. It holds alphanumeric characters. Okay, alphanumeric characters. So it's like a string. Right. Now, varchar is a, a little special, right? Yes. Uh, more efficient, wouldn't you say? Yes, because when you're working in a database, like in, in normal PHP before you saw, like with a string, there was no real hard-coded limit to, like, how many characters you could put in it. Now, when you're working with a database, you're actually storing these values. Um, so it's really good to be specific with how, like, how much you can store and, and say, like, put a limit. So you can only store, uh, like, 30 characters right. in a certain field. Right, instead of it just being wide open. Right. So, uh, like, if we were going to create some type of uh, table that had a field that was called first name or company name even, we wouldn't want to give them a thousand characters that they could use to put a company name. We'd want to make it something more realistic, like maybe 40 to 50, right? right. Okay, so uh, the interesting thing then with varchar is go ahead. 
Now, okay, with a char, you would save like 40 characters, and then it would uh, it would basically say it's take all the space and allocate it and say this space is going to be used for this field, 40 characters of it. Now a var char. Now real quick before we go into the var char, so that means if I was to type in the name of my company was Buzz with four characters, yeah, then I've got a lot of wasted. Yeah, you've just wasted 36 characters. Okay, okay, continue. Now the var char, if you just stored Buzz in that field. The way a varchar works is the uh, the limit you specify acts just as that. It's only a limit. It doesn't actually um, like set aside 40, 40 characters. What it'll do is you'll, you'll type in buzz, and then it stores like an extra byte for storing the length. So the total length isn't 40 characters anymore. If you stored buzz in that field, it'd be four characters for, the, for your name, and then an extra just to store that length. So it's like it grows with it. Right, it grows with the length of the data. Oh, cool. Hence varchar variable. Uh, uh, variable links. It, it will All I hear is Pokemon. It's, uh, <laughs> it so sounds like a Pokemon name. It's uh, varchar. Dynamic. So, anything else you want to add to that, Logan? That should be it. You sure? Hang on one second. Or not. So, uh, so in this next section, I guess I'll go ahead and... Create one now that we've talked about – well, actually, we've only talked about two. Right. Well, three, technically. So before create one, let's go ahead and talk about two more things. Okay. Uh, let's talk about text. Oh. Wow. Okay. We have a type called text. I mean, what happens if somebody wants to store data that was a memo, so, uh, some sort of long, lengthy uh, document? That's an interesting look that you're giving me over there, Adam. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, we're not going to say Varchar 10,000, are we? Actually not, because you have a limit of 255 characters on a var chart. You so can only specify as much as, I think it's 255. So, that, yeah. so that's going to get us in trouble if we, right. if we wanted to store several thousand characters, right? Right. Okay, so, um, so talk, to me about, uh, talk to me about this text. How does this work? Now, a text also stores alphanumeric characters like, like a char or var char, but it's, it's basically unlimited. You can put as much as you want in it. Okay. Unless I, you can probably specify a limit if you wanted to keep it to, say, 1,000. So I could definitely go in there then and store lengthy documents without right. any problem. Yeah, you put whole documents in it. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and say last one. Let's talk about date. Tell us about a date field type. Now, a date is a specifically formatted, like, it's it would basically be... Uh, the actual format is year dash month dash day, and it's for storing only this format. So okay, if you wanted so to s store a specific date, and easily be able to read it out. So for those out there that have worked with other systems and they're used to, uh, let's say, storing date and thinking that they're actually storing a date time stamp, this is not the field type for storing right. something. Right. This is this is only accurate to a day. It doesn't get any lower than that. So there is actually a date time. Yes, there is field type. Okay, very good. This is just for those out there with a little bit of extra knowledge, perhaps coming from some other type of database system, and they may be thinking about this time thing. So that covers int, uh, var char. We talked about char, text, date, and for just a half a second, date time. So now what we need to do is look at the format required to actually create a table. So first thing you need to do is you need to tell MySQL which database you want to use, and well, we've already done that. We're now using BuzzDB. So now when we create a table, that table is going to be created inside this database. So what we're going to do is just create, let's say a real simple one to start out with. Create table, and now we need to give it a table name. So we can call this Buzz Test, just something really simple. Now what we'll do is we're going to have an open parenthesis here, and we can go ahead and start typing our field names. In other words, the name that we want to call that field, and then the type. So if I wanted to, I could simply say, um, I don't know, we'll do name, and we'll say that the type for name is a varchar that can hold up to 15 characters. I'm going to place a comma in here so that I can now add another field, and we'll say, I don't know, age. And we'll say age, what type do you think age would be? Int. Integer. Int sounds good to me. So we'll just go ahead and come in here and type int. And I think that's good enough just for a basic example. So we'll go ahead and close the parenthesis and give it a terminator. And what we have right here is create table space, and we have buzz underscore test. This will be my table name that is going to be created and placed inside the buzz db database. And inside this, we're going to have 
uh, a field that is called name, and it is a var type that var char that can hold up to 15 characters. And we're going to have a field called age, and it holds integer values. So I'll go ahead and press enter. Okay. So now what I can do is go ahead and type in show tables, and you'll see that we have one table available to use inside BuzzDB. Okay. You can see up here it says tables in BuzzDB Buzz Test. Now, one of the things that you will find uh, very useful is the ability to actually go back in later and get a table described back to you. In other words, let's say it is a lengthy table that has maybe 20 some odd fields in it, and you don't remember how many characters a particular field had, etc. You can come back into a particular database and simply say describe and then give it the actual table name. So we can say buzz underscore test uh, terminator, hit enter, and it will tell us that fields, we have name, its type is a varchar 15. Uh, does it allow nulls? Yes. Is there a key on it? Uh, there is no key. Uh, default values null and any extra information. And basically you'll get a listing of all the fields that you have and all of this additional information. And we're going to start getting into nulls, keys, etc. Uh, a lot heavier in the next VTM. Again, this is just a very basic introduction to working with tables. Okay? So is this just pretty pretty simple? Anything yeah. you want to add to this here, Logan? Not really. Now with this type of a, a little table that we've created, I know in the, the next lesson we're going to take a look at actually putting some data inside it because we're not actually storing any data yet, right? Right. I mean, we've just set it up so that we can start plopping some data in there. If I had, let's say, one record that said John and the age was five, and I turned around again and inputted another or inserted another record that had the name as John and the same age again, uh, that would be totally fine with this database, right? Right. And this is something that, especially when working with relational databases, this is something that's not good, right? No. We, uh, we usually don't want to have repeat records. Um, we're not going to start getting into uh, relational database uh, layout, uh, design, and, uh, and exactly how it works until uh, the next couple of VTMs on down. We start getting into joining tables and talking about one-to-many relationships, etc. But um, I just wanted to say this because uh, usually you're going to want to do something when you're creating your table so that you don't have duplicate records that appear inside that table. And this is kind of where the primary key comes in, right? Yes. This is where we can uh, prevent this from happening. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you one other thing uh, before we create a new table that's going to make use of this primary key. And that is I want to go ahead and drop this or kill out this uh, table right here. So to do that, it's just like we saw with the uh, database earlier. To kill it out, we just simply said drop database in the name. It's the exact same way here where we can just simply come in here and say drop table this time, though, and then specify the table's name. Buzz. And yes? Once you drop it, you can't get it back, right? That's right. Okay. Test. And there we go. And now, again, if I come back in here and say show tables, it's an empty set. There are no tables to be displayed right here. So let's go ahead and create one now that's a little bit more, I guess, uh, realistic. And, um, let's, we'll just call it guests for storing guest book information since the next VTM is going to concentrate on making a kind of nice uh, guest book. So we'll come in here again. It's going to be create table, and we'll call it guests. And again, uh, basically those three things are going to be expected to create the table and the name of the table, open parenthesis. And now what I want to do is I'm going to create a field that's called auto ID, and it is going to be an int. And we can take this int and we can make it unsigned, can't we? Yes. You want to talk a little bit about what unsigned means? Okay. When you uh, when you create an integer, a default integer uh, store is has a length of storing ten digits and a sign. Sign meaning you could have negative numbers. Now an unsigned is it's one one digit less, so only ten digits and only zero and positive numbers. You okay. Can, um, you can't have a sign, therefore you can't have negative numbers. Gotcha. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up this auto ID thing, even though that's not going to happen anyway, so we're going to let auto incrementing right. take care of it. I just thought I would throw it in there real quick just to point that out. So we've got unsigned. Now what I want to do is come in here and set up a special parameter called auto increment. Want to tell us about that? What that will do 
is instead of specifying a value, every time, say, we put some data into this table, now that we instead of pu actually putting our own data into auto ID, we just leave it blank, basically. We put a null into it, and auto increment will take whatever value is in that and add one to it. Okay. So it takes... So it'll start off at nothing or zero, and then it'll keep adding. So we add a record, and that gets set to w that record gets set to one. Add another record, and that get record gets set to two. Okay, sounds good. And we'll go ahead and we'll set this field as the primary key. And we're setting this as a primary key so that we make sure that the auto ID right here field does not have the same value entered in there twice ever. That's impossible. You'll get an error if you actually try to do that. So uh, what I wanted to do is just have a whole bunch of information here to show you that you know you can get a little bit more sophisticated when creating a simple field other than just saying name varchar15. Okay, so we've got a little bit more information happening here. So we've got that set as the primary key. Now what I want to do, comma, let's go ahead and now create first name. It just kind of wrapped around there. First uh, name, and this is going to be type varchar. We're going to say that first name we can store 15 characters, comma. Now let's go ahead and do last name. And again, it's going to be Varchar, 15 characters. I'm going to do, let's say we wanted to get the person's age. And again, it'll be an int. Now um, let's go ahead and say perhaps I wanted to grab comments from the person as well. So we could say comments. And we would make this text because... Right, they might type a whole paragraph of text, maybe give their life story if they wanted to. Mm, that'd be scary. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and place that in there. And then let's, uh, let's find out when the person actually entered this information. So we can go ahead and type in perhaps date entered. And we'll make this just a simple date type. And we'll go ahead and close off our uh, parentheses and put a terminator there at the end. And... So what we're looking at doing right here is creating a table called guests inside BuzzDB. It's going to have a field called auto ID. It's going to be, uh, it'll contain an unsigned integer uh, that will auto increment, and it will also be the primary key so that we cannot have duplicate data being stored in this particular field. Um, then we've got a comma. The next field is going to be first underscore name. It'll be a varchar. Uh, up to 15 characters. Next field will be last underscore name, varchar, up to 15 characters. Then we'll store the age, which will be an integer type value. Uh, then we'll have comments, which will be text. Then we'll have date entered, which is date. Okay? So we'll go ahead and press enter. And now what we need to do is come in and show our tables. You see guest is now available. And as I showed you guys before, I just want to show it to you again. Describe guests. And there's a description of the actual guest's database. So you can see much the structure of it. Yeah, a lot, much more lengthy than what we had just a second ago. So um, basically, this is all I wanted to cover in this section right here. I know it's uh, relatively simple, you know, about 20 minutes long. Just get you up and running with creating basic tables. We will be coming back to the creation of tables many, many times as our tables will become more and more sophisticated. In the next section, we're going to use guests to actually insert some data into it, see how we can modify that data, as well as delete the data back out. So that's pretty much everything for this section here. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys.